Hello everyone, I'm McCall and I am a somatic therapist. If you'd like to find out what it is that I do, you can check out the link I have down below this video. Well, it's not really a link, it's just my posting of a website. So today, what we're gonna talk about is Rohini Nakshatra. Uh, Rohini Nakshatra, this is the fourth in the progression of 27 videos I'll be doing on the Vedic Nakshatras. Um, Rohini is really, uh, to me, it's quite interesting. Uh, but first off, let me kind of go ahead, but go ahead and review the connections here. The, the primary connections I'm doing with all these videos, how I'm linking Kundalini Yoga with astrology is through what they call the gunas. So the gunas are rajas, tamas, and sattva. And again, what we're talking about here is these are the attributes that are present in all creation. Everything that is created has these attributes. So you have the active component, which is rajasic energy. You've got the tamasic energy, which is, uh, so tamasic is, how do I best describe this? Is this is the condensing of energy into form, into matter. Uh, one of the words that gets used is inertia. And then finally you have the passive aspect, which is sattva. So sattva is, is balancing. Now, with Rohini, what we have is we have three different levels here. We have a life path level, kind of the attitude or the way, like the way of the individual. And then finally, the most superficial aspect, which is kind of the, the intellect in some ways. I, well, that's the best way I kind of look at it. So it's the most superficial though. So we've got Rajasic as a life path, Tamasic as the way, and once again, Rajasic energy as sort of the intellect. Now Rohini, what's really important to look at here is what its motivation is. So the motivation of Rohini is moksha. It's liberation. Uh, what do we, you know, liberation of the soul of the individual of, you know, any, what we're liberating really is uh, attachment to the material plane or the identification with the material. And this can be the body, it can be the mind, it can be all sorts of attributes. Uh, so Rohini, it's really important for Rohini to develop a kind of objectivity, uh, a sort of objectivity where they can see the possible pitfalls. Uh, again, this is a very materialistic sign, and I don't mean materialistic in a negative sign of way. This, in fact, the sign isn't meant to experience the pleasures of life, the sensuality of life, sex, and you know, touch, and, and wonderful luxuries, and you know, I don't know, perfume, and all these sorts of things are associated with this sign. Uh, but what I like to think this sign is most associated with is kind of, well, let me back it up. So the Sanskrit meaning of Rohini is the menstruation. So it's the first menstruation of a woman that has to occur before she can give birth. So without a menstruation, you can't give birth. So, and another uh, symbol is a chariot. Uh, the other symbol, well, the, the chariot part is, is interesting because the idea here is, is that uh, a chariot is pulled by horses. And the chariot was usually meant for nobility. And so it's a dignified thing. So horses are also very dignified and kind of noble creatures in my opinion. Uh, and they're also very swift. And the swiftness of the horses is representative of this rajasic energy, of this dri very driven energy. Now the nobility aspect of the chariot, of the nobility who's in the chariot rather, is that sort of tamasic way. So again, this is a very dignified, noble kind of nakshatra, if it's operating with clarity. What happens with uh, a generally very materialistic nakshatra if it's not operating with clarity? Well, what ends up happening is, is that they get stuck. And this inertia aspect, this tamasic energy, you get stuck in density and you get caught up in the pursuit of pleasure and the pursuit of material gain. Uh, again, this, this nakshatra generally avoids a lot of obstacles in life. It does pretty well in terms of like achievement of material things. So it's really good energy for that. Now, the most general way I can kind of think about Rohini and what what is the energy of Rohini? Uh, the word that I like to think about is this this word hierophant or a magician. So a magician or a hierophant, kind of the same thing. 
what they're really attempting to do is to bring heaven to earth. So this idea of bringing heaven to earth is, so what is heaven? Heaven is divine. It's the divine energy of creation, you know, whatever it may be. And so Rohini is this vessel of the divine. Because again, its primary focus in life is this liberation, is this moksha. So it's channeling this divine energy and it needs to do it in a very clear, clear, clear way. Otherwise, what ends up happening is they end up becoming like a chameleon. They end up conforming. They conform to people, places, things, etc., etc., because they become stuck in that material realm. So once they decide to, oh yeah, I'm going to start meditating, I'm going to become more mindful in life, then what ends up happening is they can start to perceive within themselves what is authentic. What is my authentic flow? What is it that I want to express out into the world? So it could be art, it could be whatever it may be. Again, this is a very artistic, creative sign. So the most general way to look at this is think about the sun, the moon, and the earth. And what are the relationships? So Rohini just happens to be ruled by the moon. So the moon, you know, it affects the earth in a lot of ways. And it's a very powerful uh, effect that it has on the earth. Think about it. It manipulates the tides. Those of us who are very sensitive to the moon, we see very clearly how it, it basically, I, I manipulate is a bad word, but it's the best word I can think of at the moment. It manipulates our life force, our energy. Like one of the things that I always experienced when, you know, following lunar cycles is that as we approach a full moon, I always get the sense that I'm being squeezed up. There's a tension and I feel like I'm being squeezed upward. And then on new moons, when the moon is completely dark, I always feel like I'm being pulled down towards my root. So the moon is very powerful. So what's going on here, and again, keep in mind that the moon represents the mind in astrology, generally. So the mind is our way of perceiving the soul. And this is very similar to uh, when we were kids, we were told not to stare at the sun. Don't, don't look at the sun, it's too bright. You'll go blind, right? And so it's very much like that with the mind. Like the mind can't perceive the soul. And again, the, the analogy here is the soul is the sun. So the mind can't see the well, the, the mind cannot perceive the soul, so we have to look at it indirectly, you know. And so we look at it indirectly through the mind, by working with the mind. And the mind is when we get to see what's authentic and what is not authentic. Again, it's always showing us duality. It's showing us this and that. And so based on the choices we make, based on functioning through our inner authority, uh, because again, this this particular sign, it can get caught up in this external authority. You need to achieve these things in life. The reality here is, is as they learn, as Rohini natives learn to pay attention to their internal authority, they can start to see their soul, this divine energy, directly, more clearly rather. So, and then what ends up happening is that they then manifest on earth. They manifest the material things and they create those those things that that they feel like uh, the divine impulse is guiding them to create so let me think if there's anything else i want to say about rohini um no i mean i i think i think that's about what i want to cover for the moment on rohini uh again the, the this is a very, like I said, it's a lot of energy. It's a very passionate sign. It's a very sensual sign. Uh, and, you know, and that's pretty much the best way to look at it. And the last thing I'll say about Rohini is think about it as planting a seed. You have to have the correct resources to nurture that seed to grow. And, you know, you have to have water. You have, obviously have to have the earth itself and the minerals and the earth and the correct, you know, fertilizers or whatever it may, may need. And then you also need light. And so all these components have to be correct in order for that seed to grow, to propagate. So Rohini spends a lot of time early in life gathering resources, gathering, gathering education, gathering resources. And again, it's, it's all about creating this like sort of support system so that then they 
can then reach out into the world and express in their authentic way. So with all that said, uh, I'm going to now show you the Kundalini Yoga exercise that is associated with Rohini. All right, so once again here, well, what I have is, this is Yogi Bhajan's book called The Mind. Mind's copy is really beat up. Um, and again, I love this book. Now at the back of the book, there's a chart. And this chart is how I figured out uh, which guna is related to the nakshatras. Because in what Yogi Bhajan calls the nakshatras are the 27 projections. And Rohini specifically, again, what we're looking at is rajasic level on a base, as its base. And so rajas is the equivalent to this term ankankar. <laughs> That's a tricky word to say. Uh, so rajasic energy on its life path, basic level. And so if you follow that energy down to here, now what we're doing is we're adding the negative mind, which is basically the equivalent of tam tamas or tamasic energy. So when they're talking about negative, they're not really talking about negative. What they're talking about, like not in the sense of negative versus positive, how like, oh, you're a negative person, you're a positive person. What they're actually talking about here is that sort of tamasic energy, uh, you know, that tends to connect to material things and you know, again, it's about density, it's about protection, it's about, um, yeah, it just, I mean, basically think about it as the protective aspect. And so finally, then what you do is you go down here and there's another add-on, which is this positive sign. Again, it's getting small print here, I apologize. And that leads us to number five, the chameleon. So that's how I came, that's how I figured out the, uh, which guna, figured out the gunas that relate to the nakshatras. And then I also, then I linked them to Kundalini Yoga through this particular method. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what the exercise actually looks like. So you flip to projection five, and here we go. So projection five the chameleon, phase of a mental projection, and then there's exercises. And I highly re recommend you guys get these books. And this is a two-part exercise, and I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that right about now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this uh, particular exercise. Again, this is projection five or the chameleon. The a couple things about this exercise. One, this is um, the exercise is cultivating what they call the one minute breath. Now the one minute breath is not, not incredibly easy. It's essentially, it's a 20 second inhale. You retain the breath for 20 seconds and you exhale 20 seconds. Uh, again, not easy. So what I suggest you do when doing the breathing portion of this exercise, which is the first portion, again, this is a two part exercise, is to you know start off with 10 seconds, 10 seconds in, Retain for 10 seconds, 10 seconds out, or you can start off with 15 seconds. So 15 seconds in, you know, again, you get the point. The point is, is to build up to the 20 seconds, you know, or the one minute breath. Uh, you don't want to feel anxious while you're doing this. It, it should feel relatively smooth. One of the things I also suggest you do is perhaps do um, some bellows breath or breath of fire. And again, what that is, is I'll describe breath of fire. So breath of fire is when you, you're you pumping the navel point in and out. So the navel point, again, is right about the belt line. So when, when you pull in your belt line, air should go out. And when you relax your belt line, air will come in. So it's a rapid breathing. So as you pull in, again, air goes out. And as you relax, air comes in. So it's non-diaphragmic breathing. In other words, you're not really worried, worrying about inhaling and exhaling. Another breath you could do again, as I mentioned earlier, which is bellows. And bellows is diaphragmic, but it's rapid. So it's rapid sniffs in and out really fast. And again, what you're doing here is you're saturating with oxygen, saturating, saturating, and saturating. And this will help you retain the breath for those 20 seconds in, 
retaining for 20 seconds and exhaling for 20 seconds out. And again, the one minute breath. So what does a one minute breath do? Well, because the mind is tied to the motion of the diaphragm, you could say the solar plexus and the third eye are actually very, very closely connected. So if your diaphragm is doing this, your mind is doing this. If the diaphragm is moving slowly, then your mind is moving slowly. Now what's really important with Rohini is that it recognizes the divine impulse that it's being guided by. And that requires mental, some stillness and requires that they be able to perceive that. And that means the mind must be still. Now, the second part of this exercise is dealing with uh, a sound har, H-A-R. So when you make the sound har, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you're pulling in your belt line. So once again, pulling in the navel point. And the sound is initiated from base up. So it pulls in the belt line, the sound comes up and out. And what ends up happening, if you can roll the R at the end of har, what ends up happening is the tongue flicks against the roof of the mouth. And so like with all Kundalini Yoga meditations, there's always a whole lot going on. So this particular exercise is no different. Uh, there's a drishti or an eye position, which is once again, uh, one tenth open or nine tenths shut, however you want to perceive it. And the mudra. So the mudra, the hand position on this, I think is really interesting because it's kind of like your, uh, this whole exercise is really fascinating actually in that it's, it's this, so let me go ahead and describe the mudra first and then I'll go into it. So this is the first part of the exercise, the mudra. So the elbows are at the ribs, arms are raised up right about the heart level, palms up. So it's like you're waiting to receive something, right? Waiting to receive that divine impulse that is Rohini. So we're waiting to receive something. And so while we're holding this position is when we're going to be doing the breathing. Again, it's inhaling 20 seconds, you know, retaining for 20 seconds, exhaling out for 20 seconds. And so you're gonna do this same pattern for, you know, approximately 11 minutes. Uh, again, start slow, don't force it. Uh, so after 11 minutes or so of, again, holding the elbows at your sides, palms up and receiving, then what you do is you're gonna go into the second part of this, which is the, the hard part. So now this is interesting to me. So as you are pulling in your navel, what you're doing here is you're actually drawing energy from your base upward, not only through the use of the sound, but again, just the pumping action of the navel point, create, it's a bit like hydraulics. So it's channeling energy up, 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 up. So again, this is, this is all about, well, in Taoism, what they call is the microcosmic orbit. So you move up the back side of the body, down the front side of the body. So the pulling into the navel is the engagement of the mind with the center of your will. The heart is the guidance, which is why the hands are held in a receptive position at the heart. Now the sound, heart, what we're gonna do, again, every time you pull in, it's essentially pressurizing the energy up the spine. So it's gonna be heart, and you're actually gonna be pulling your fingertips towards the palms of your hands. So it's heart, 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 Har, 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 har. I think you get the theme. So again, let me go ahead and recite how the whole thing goes. So to begin, step one, 11 minutes. Pull up tall, inhale 20 seconds. Again, eyes one tenth shut. You wanna, as you're inhaling, you wanna move your awareness down the body. You wanna make sure your pelvic floor is relaxed. You wanna make sure your belly is relaxed. You wanna be able to pull in air completely and deeply. And then you're gonna retain the breath for 20 seconds. So sometimes what I do during this in order to keep my mind engaged in my body, again, what Kundalini Yoga is attempting to do, it's attempting to 
bring the mind back into the body in a lot of ways. It's, it's a whole other story here. Um, but what we're doing is we're finding something to anchor into that's more solid. Uh, the mind is etheric in nature. The body, although it's transient and also part of the illusion and it's also immaterial in a lot of ways, it resonates at a slower vibration. So it gives our mind something to connect to that will slow it down. So what I usually do after I inhale and I'm retaining the breath is I lift up my perineum very gently. And I think about the perineum as being a bit of a laser pointer. So it's always pointing up, as you lift it, I think about it pointing towards my navel. And so what you might feel at your navel is a pulse. Or you can, in your mind's eye, you could perceive like a glowing ball, a number of things. And so then when you exhale, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be pulling in gently on your navel point and you're exhaling all this air out. But what you're also doing is you're distributing the energy that's in your navel point area or the, uh, another word for that area is the dantian, the lower dantian, or you can call it the hara. So, and again, then the energy spreads throughout. So here we go, I'll go ahead and demonstrate the whole thing. So inhaling, 20 seconds. Retaining for 20 seconds. And then exhaling for 20 seconds. So again, after 11 minutes, then you begin the second part. Hot. Har, 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 har. And then finally to finish, inhale, retain the breath. Make a tight fist. Hold it in for about 10 to 20 seconds. Get a nice tight fist. And then exhale, relax, and meditate. Well, hopefully you all enjoy this exercise and have enjoyed this video, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you.